You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan, back for another Locked On Texas Tech special edition big 12 weekly as we are looking from a conference level and beyond at what is going down and uh chris there were some pretty interesting things to touch on from the news cycle this week as you had ross dellinger of yahoo sports among some others uh talking about others talking about a new relationship with the big 12 conference primarily florida state and clemson were the programs that were being discussed and of course they would be the highlights of an acc hall at least as I see it, uh, if that were come to, were to come to pass and there were programs that were available for the taking. But obviously there are some others out there as far as like a Louisville or Miami, Virginia Tech, and some of these that I think could also be very appealing options as far as additions for the Big 12 Conference. But uh, you see it there on the screen. There's some Seminole and Tiger <laughs> smoke in the air. Are we ready to inhale? <laughs> Just I love yet. it. <laughs> what did you make of it, man? Because it was a little bit beyond just, you know, a, a random Twitter account or some of these that we've gotten accustomed to seeing throwing stuff out there, but we kind of know this is not rooted in reality. I mean, Dellinger, a, a credible national oh, yeah. outlet, a national guy, obviously. So when you get guys like that start talking about it, I think perks my antennas up a little bit. Uh, what did it? How, how did it sit with you whenever you're hearing some of this stuff come across? Well, it's July, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so and so that this is typically kind of the takes over college athletics conversations uh, every every summer. At least it has for the last I don't know how many years. Uh, yeah, Ross is uh, is a very reputable reporter and has broken a lot of stuff and in a and a stud you know edition for Yahoo and 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 all that they do. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here. He reported that there was basically a, a conversation, or or that they there there had been talks, preliminary or whatever, however you want to yeah. phrase it. And I, I think that was kind of all there was to it. And I think that he's then, and, and subsequently he was asked about it on a podcast, and kind of just kind of talked about that a bit more. And then I think people have kind of started to try to advance the story and push the ball down the field a bit with it. Okay. So here, here's the, here's the thing. W- wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that of course, like in, in some ways, of course, Brett Yormark would have tried to reach out to Florida state and Clemson. I'm like, isn't that his job? We're open for business. We're, we're not saying no to expansion. That There are no brainer additions. If you could somehow make it happen. I mean, that's not really news that, you, you know, and, and maybe it's, uh, I, I guess, depending on how serious it is or if it's real, uh, the, the mutual interest is the is the real aspect there. But to me, it could be also a leverage play from Florida State. Like, we'll show you, ACC. Like, you better mm. get us before the Big 12 scoops us up. Okay, so there, there's all that. I mean, I, I would think that it's not real news that, Brett Yormark has talked with somebody in Clemson, Florida State. Like, duh, I would have hoped that he did it a year ago. Right. And he's he makes a weekly call. All right, guys, it's time for me to make my, you know, my call <laughs> to those. But I mean, okay. So so there's that. But what can you offer them right now that the ACC can't? You you can't pay them, you know, any more money. You, I, I think um, that's what they want. They want to be paid like the Big Ten in the in the SEC, which is substantially more than what you're getting. So I think part of the private equity conversations have have to do with this um, from Commissioner Yormark and introducing this as a possibility, in that the private equity money could help facilitate an exit and and all that but then at that point the league is funding an exit and and inherently you've got pretty significant uneven new uh, uneven revenue sharing excuse me whereas if you were to acquire these folks by buying them out of their current deal and you would get them you're having to pay the 
the fee and then pay them a share and and all you know you, you see what i'm saying it, it, it oh, yeah. seems a bit far fetched because that's the only that's what they want they they're not I, I just don't think Florida State and Clemson are willing to walk away from all that is in the South to come play ball with Utah and Central Florida and Texas Tech and all that. And I love the Big 12. I would love for this to be true. But I just don't envision a, a scenario to where that is their number one choice. Now, I, I will listen to the fact that – because it's, it's as if Florida State – you know, the SEC and the Big Ten have been pretty tight-lipped about any interest in, in in these institutions. So nobody really knows if they even have an option to go to either the Big Ten or the SEC. And the SEC is probably where they would prefer, maybe more of a cultural fit, geographic fit, all that stuff. They would love the paycheck. The SEC doesn't need these teams. They own those states. They already have University of Florida. They have, um, you, you know, South Carolina. The, the, the University of South Carolina. They, they have all of that covered. And, and, and it never gets talked about enough, but like North Carolina is the real apple of everybody's eye. That's the one program that I think the SEC and the Big Ten, if they could fight over, that's the one that they'd add for all that they bring. Geography being one of the main reasons because it's the one kind of spot where you, you don't have a lot of it covered yet. And they've got the academia, they've got the the brand and, and the hoops part of it and all that stuff. But um again, I, I would hope that Brett Yormark had had talked to Florida State and Clemson. That's not news to me. Is that is there mutual interest and is that real? Or is this just a you know, firing off a bottle rocket in the air and hopefully somebody's paying attention to you uh, you know, as you go through your your court proceedings and all these things trying to, you know, get somebody to give you an offer that maybe you want. And and the thing is, too, Cowan, if you were to ever add Florida State and Clemson in any capacity and if you paid their fee or whatever, they would leave you in the drop of a hat if ever offered by the Big Ten or the SEC, in my opinion. And then you'd be right back to square one. I can see what Brett Yormark is trying to do. Uh, all those things he's doing his job, but that, that would be my, uh, thought on, on a lot of that. Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't necessarily. And I think the last part you made there, last point you made there is an important one to keep in mind. First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And summertime means baseball, burgers, and money in the bank when you get to picking winners with FanDuel. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right, $200 bucks you can use to cool off and beat the heat with a refreshing parlay, uh, an over-under play, or by getting the money line mojo going. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make a splash by adding a big win to your summer bucket list with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And I think the last part you made there, the last point you made there is an important one to keep in mind. Um, if you feel like you've gotten into uh, any realm of stability, uh, you would kind of be back into some uneasy footing if you were to add them for the time being, and especially in a scenario where we're talking about unequal revenue and things like that. I mean, no disrespect to Florida State or Clemson, but unequal revenue for Florida State and Clemson? Like that's really going to make up the day. Is that going to make up uh, enough difference as far as the gap between the big 12 and the sec and the big 10 to justify that? I don't think so. Um, I kind of feel like the big 12, um, and certainly covering a program that remained as part of the, uh, so-called hateful eight. Uh, I kind of feel like, you know, you've, you've been exposed to the world as far as vulnerability is concerned. And you've gotten to the point where you understand, or I think I do as a fan, what this conference is what this league is, what its members are. And there's something about it that I do appreciate and value as far as not having to bow at the altar of some omnipotent blue blood that you've got to give extra, you know, tuppence to, uh, I guess, weekly as you go to Austin or you go to Norman or you go to whatever. And it was one thing when you were doing it uh, for a Texas or an Oklahoma or Nebraska. I mean, I remember back in the early Big 12 era, and I guess it was somewhat more uh, competitively based, uh, national television appearance based, unequal revenue sharing. It wasn't just like, hey, no matter what you are competitively, 
we're giving you more of this. But, of course, those teams are typically very good. Nebraska early on, and then obviously they faded from that. I think that's probably in some part why they were catching feelings because they were no longer on the uh, benefiting end or beneficiary end of the unequal revenue uh, agreement. But, you know, that's one thing. But we're talking about Florida State and Clemson. I know they've got national title trophies. I, I get that. But for some reason, and maybe it's just because of where, you know, I grew up in, in the state of Texas and you as well, that they don't really resonate with me all that much like, a say, Texas would as far as what they are uh, and what they represent as one of the behemoths of college football. I mean, we're talking about our neighbors here in the great state in Bryan College Station or in Austin as two of the most well-financed athletics departments on the face of the earth. So I don't, I can't really, you know, necessarily saddle up. Sure, Florida State Clemson, you want to come because you got nowhere else to go, fine. But bending over backwards, unequal revenue sharing, going out of your way to land those two, knowing all the while that they would do exactly what you said there uh, when you were wrapping up your comment as far as bouncing, which by the way, everybody else would as well, including Texas Tech. But we're talking about two options that would seemingly be theoretically a lot more attractive or there's a much greater possibility that they would have the option to bounce if we're talking about the Tigers or Seminoles. I, I'm just not into it. I guess I'm maybe trying to be or continue to be a little bit more of a realist as far as appealing and um, similar additions to the Big 12 Conference. So there are some of those in the ACC. We've talked about that before. Uh, when you talk about uh, a Louisville or a Virginia Tech, um, a pit or whatever it might be. I don't really know if I have a good enough grasp on what Miami thinks they are uh, as far as a potential addition to the Big 12 or whether or not you know they're too good for that. We've already seen some of those that thought they were too good for that. And where are they now? Well, they were represented at Big 12 Media Days. Hello, Pac-12 immigrants. <laughs> um, so I, again, never say never, which is something that we always have to throw in to these conversations. Uh, but I kind of, I might buy into a little bit more of the bottle rocket theory, like you're talking about, well, let's go ahead and float this out there. Let's go ahead and call Ross up and let him know. Of course, we've been having these conversations. I mean, what do you think? Your Mark's just out playing golf. Who is he? Chuck Ninus? No, of course he's making these calls, <laughs> but I, that that's no shock that the conversations have been had. Is there anything to it? And that resembling mutual interest, not so sure about it, but, um, you know, the ACC situation is only going to grow more desperate, Chris. So maybe something does come about as a result of, again, I got no place else to go. And we're here to shelter you, at least for the time being. But unequal revenue, bending over backwards, et cetera, I, I'm just not putting much stock in. And just as a fan of Texas Tech and a program that's in the Big 12 Conference, I don't want them to do that. Um, I don't think it closes enough of the gap, as I said at the beginning, to really justify those things. So that's the way that I would see it. But um, I'm buying into what you're selling as well as far as maybe just some of the, like I said, the bottle rocket theory, just trying to float that out there for leverage. That does happen on occasion, right? Whether it's coaches' contracts, realignment interests, things get floated. And then all of a sudden, maybe they snowball uh, into something real or maybe they don't, but it's obviously happened before. You know, and the, the other part is, is these court cases and the court proceedings uh, happen. You know, the uh, the old, you know, the ACC is going to drag this out as long as they can. They're in no hurry. They, they like the way that they, it's currently constructed. And they don't want to lose, you know, Florida State or Clemson. So they're going to drag this out as long as possible. If at any point a, a judge were to say you can't like this grant of rights thing that everybody feels is about as ironclad as anything in college athletics as far as keeping something together it's just an agreement and a documentation that it's i mean even i think with all the money that texas had they're like we can't we we're just going to stay in here for the next three or four years and then they they got out a year early but that was a negotiated deal they didn't actually ever get out of the grant of rights but if if, if a judge were to ever rule that a grant of rights is unconstitutional or it it it, it, it you can't you, you know you, you don't you're not beholden to it yeah at that point then then all bets are off for a lot of things not just the the situation we're talking about but that's also what i'm talking about like where if if you, you couldn't add them to your league and then and then make them stay Right, they, they could leave whenever they want if there was no such thing as a as a grant of rights. I um I, I also I had somebody float the, the aspect to me of 
what, what about you know like the the ACC part of it if it were to because what, what I what I think ultimately is the most realistic scenario is kind of a uh, a reformed ACC. I don't know if they like kick anybody out or if if they if they reform it and then they go, okay, y'all been making a lot of noise, we'll give you a lot more money than everybody else is getting. I don't know what how that looks, but I, I'd be willing to bet you that's more of, of the, the realistic scenario. I just don't think the ACC is currently constructed has much of a future. Uh, yeah. and, and it's it's on borrowed time. Okay. But again, the, the leadership there is going to play – they're going to play the four corner offense. They're going to stall. They're going to just pass the play, keep away, and and you know we're not we don't have a shot clock, <laughs> so we're just going to stall right. and like we're going to we're going to appeal and we're going to like you know wh- whatever we can do to just drag this out because they're in no hurry. It's the other parties that are in a hurry because they're they feel like they're missing on dollars every year, year in and year out. Um, but the basketball component is fascinating. That's not where the money is with this whole deal. We're talking about Florida State and Clemson because the, their perceived football prowess. If you're Brett Yormark, though, you're not going to have any luck here. But you could, if the ACC were to break apart, I mean, hey, Duke and Carolina, like you want to join <laughs> the best basketball league in the country? And that that's part of why you know, like I had somebody say, well, what, what, maybe Florida State and Clemson are looking that the Big Twelve would be more interesting to them because they're thinking about things other than football and all that stuff. And I'm like, I wanted to laugh, but I'm like, yeah, you just you don't really understand how this works. But I'm like, I humored them <laughs> with the, the basketball part. Okay, right, I'll, right. I'll listen. I'll listen. But I mean, you, you're telling me they're going to go want to play with. Kansas and University of Houston, Arizona, and they're going to leave Duke and Carolina. I mean, which are some of the bluest bloods that there is. Like, I don't yeah. that 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 is lost on me. So this is all about you've got to be able to offer them a substantial amount of money for that to make it worth their while. And I just don't see uh, a way to do that unless you get into this private equity. And at that point. You know, if that fun, funds their exit fees, I mean, it, it is at that point unequal revenue. And, and they're now the whole league is is on the hook for paying, you know. So, but Brett Yormark is trying to put, he's a disruptor. I've had Kirby Hocutt give me that direct word, and he loves that about him. He's a disruptor. So he's going to turn over every rock and figure out, is there a way to make my league better? And, and of course, you would call Florida State and Clemson. Of course. But I think you and I are both trying to put pen to paper and trying to be real with it and trying to make sense of it. Do I think that there is ACC schools that you that, that would love a, a spot or that you could jump on and there would be? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just don't know if I firmly believe that Florida State and Clemson, no matter how many people that you read or tweet or podcast about how much they wish it was true, it doesn't make it true. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking about when you said, you know, the ACC's future, either not having one or having one only as a revamped conference. They did just convince a program to come and join the conference for zero dollars. So I don't know. Maybe there's something outside the box if you can find some others out there. Yeah, to which Florida State and Clemson were furious about. They're like, see, this proves our point. This league sucks. That's exactly right. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And, And freaking the California. Yeah. You know, whatever situation that is with Stanford and Cal, like, what are we doing, people? Desperation. Um, that, that, yeah, they put this in their lawsuit. They're like, the, 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 our, our league is proving our point. Like, we're just giving away, you know, whatever. And so, anyway, and SMU is just like sitting over there quietly in the corner, like, we are a member of the AC. I mean, Florida That's State, right. Florida State plays in Dallas, Texas this fall. Mm-hmm. It's a conference game. <laughs> that's wild to me that is wild. that is wild to me um so if you're a Nola like, fan yeah show up in, in dallas and and do the you know do, do the yeah. deal but i mean it's, yeah i was just thinking it's like the last days of blockbuster video uh you want to come in for a free copy of uh, mrs doubtfire on vhs we're giving them away <laughs> um and we all know how that went great movie Man. but blockbuster video did not make it um, i thought I, I felt like going to you, you know I grew up in the Toys R Us era, right? Which you know that that was like 
that was the holy grail because I mean it was like whether you're in a video games <laughs> or wanted right. a new bike or they had it all. You know, the the, the 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 stick figure, whatever you were into, man. It was like there was a department for everything, and it's it's the, the, these things no longer. But as I got older, it's like the blockbuster trumped the Toys R Us trip when your mom <laughs> would take you to, you know. And so yeah, the blockbuster thing. I was like, well, this was. I mean, you know, uh, I I would thoroughly enjoyed you know going through the the videos, and then yeah. I started renting video games out and everything. Yeah, but R.I.P. Man. R.I.P. R.I.P. That magical <laughs> little giraffe once upon a time had great, had everything yes, you could look for. With, with the and, Toys uh, R Us. Yes. Yeah, and so did Blockbuster. But, uh, well, they're gone at this point in time. It's like, hey, guys, you think we should uh, we should worry about this Netflix thing? Mailing out DVDs? What are you, insane? They're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, so maybe we'll uh, reconvene 15 years from now, Chris, to see what we got right and wrong on this episode. Let's go ahead and bookmark this one. But uh, appreciate sure. some uh, perspectives there from you and some more bonus time, as always. Have a great rest of your weekend, man. Enjoyed it. You too, man. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it, as always. Uh, everybody get subscribed if you're not already, so you never miss an episode on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. I think we are uh, maybe somewhere around only 100 subscribers away on YouTube from 5,000, which comes with a commemorative keychain. So we'd love to have that keychain. So get in there and get subscribed if you're not already. Uh, Appreciate those who have already. And if you have already, just set up some burner accounts. Get back in there and subscribe another five or 10 times this weekend. For Chris, I'm Casey. Thanks for being out there as always. We hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.